Right, I've been looking at these pictures of the City of Rapture from Bioshock and what I want to do is uh, quickly create this kind of underwater lighting effect in Bryce. So here I've launched Bryce 7.1 Pro and I'm going to hold the control key down and click on the terrain. That will bring me a terrain in default grey. Right, go into the terrain editor and click on picture with the shift key hold held down and that will take us into the deep texture editor and using a material made in a previous tutorial, Create a Cityscape, I'm going to try and find the material that I made. So this is a DTE, DTE generated cityscape texture, as was covered in previous tutorial, which gives me a height map that looks like the tops of buildings, or hopefully does. So that's that. What I'm going to do is press Ctrl C and that will record the height map. So I want to modify this height map next. So now I've copied that height map, I delete that terrain, hold the control key down, click on the terrain again to bring in a new default grey terrain, as you can see. Edit that and press Control V and that brings me my height map in. The important thing is now that this height map is just height map information, it's not being generated from the DTE, which means I can now edit it and I'm just going to do Gaussian edges, which means it's got this lump in the middle now and it all fades out towards the edges and having done that enlarge it and stick it up on the, uh, the surface here increase the height of it and I'm going to get rid of the infinite plane underneath it and that's the shape of my city it's going to be it sort of uh, sort of matches the overall profile seen in this image here which bulges in the middle might move the camera around a bit uh, the other thing I've noticed is that the sides of the city are hollow and that's because I've not set the city to being a solid. So now it's set to solid, that will fill in the holes. Uh, it's going to be very straightforward this. So I'm going to turn the atmosphere off and make sure I set it to fully black. And I'm going to turn the sun off. So now I've got no light source at all. Uh, and the material for the terrain, I'm going to use one that's available on Bryce5.com and uh, I've saved it here so it's in the shared materials so you can find this on Bryce5.com and it's the infinite city material and the reason I chose this is it's got these little spots that are going to be lights you won't be able to see any of the bump detail or it's unlikely uh, just the light so if I increase the ambience so it's providing maximum ambience on these light spots that represent windows and make sure that the global ambience control is set to fully white so hold the alt key down and click on the color swatch there to bring up this menu and that in uh, standard render mode gives me this effect what, uh, what's missing from this is the glowing light that gives the effect that it's underwater uh, to create that effect I'm going to combine um, true ambience render mode so in render mode premium effects, I'll go into true ambience, TA scatter correction, I'll use boost light, I'll turn this raise per pixel down to 16 to increase ren uh, reduce render time, increase efficiency, and I'm going to reduce the maximum ray depth to 4. Now if I render that, the there's still very little uh, information that's crossing over from these ambient lights to light the buildings around them. I'm going to include another light source and a volumetric material to capture that light from the light source so it can then go back and light the buildings which is how I'm using the Trambience effect to get the scattered light effect. So the underwater fogging material I'm going to provide uh, on a sphere, so standard price sphere, make it a bit larger than this uh, terrain with the building effect on, like so. And the material I'm going to put on is one that I've copied from uh, Dan Whiteside. Uh, we were looking at uh, creating the lighthouse beam effect and he suggested you could do it by using a fog material to pick this up. So this is uh, Dan's fog material. This is suggested from that uh, forum thread. So here it is. Uh, it's just basic shading and there is no shadow things checked. So it's a volumetric material, 100 diffuse, one base density, 75 fuzzy factor, zero edge softness, and at the moment the quality is set at 50. So it's quite a straightforward material, but we're going to use it to interact with other things in the scene, so a light source. So at the moment then, I've added that material and you can't really see much difference other than to see that the render time has gone up. So now I'm going to add a light source, 
a radial light source and I'm going to edit the colour of it and I'm going to make it with a sort of a bluey green colour so it's uh, in keeping with the images that I was looking at and increase the intensity of diffuse and specular by a factor of 2 to 50 now let's see is that in this scene somewhere so it is I move it forward and around and see if I can get it lighting the front of these buildings a bit and perhaps lower it down for effect so it's just a matter of moving this light source around where it's going to give me a nice effect in this building if it if it uh, if it gets clipped by the building obviously it's going to vanish so now you can see we're sort of getting somewhere now with this if I uh, reverse the camera out a bit and uh, give this a render you can see perhaps that there's circles appearing concentric circles and uh, these can be eliminated by uh, changing the quality of the volumetric material so this effect so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the render size a bit because it's, uh, it's quite slow so I'll, I'll take it down to that sort of size and I'll increase on the sphere in the material the quality to 65 and see if that removes you see I can't really see the banding now and then We'll give this a render, and uh, you can see it, this uh, raise per pixel, which is 16. We're just going to take a couple of minutes, so I'll just pause the video and let that render out, and then we'll see whether we need to turn the quality up and perhaps uh, consider a few uh, refinements to this approach. So there's a start. Obviously, it's still a bit basic. So let's have a look at these scenes and see what really sort of makes it. There's there's a few gantries that could be added in, and and some additional light sources. And it seems to be these search lights coming up add a bit of character to it. So let's begin by creating a sort of search light. So I'll create a spotlight effect, and uh, I'll rotate that round so it's pointing up. And you can see that's created a cone of light. If I uh, if I stretch the cone out that'll make it narrower and then I can move it towards the back of the sphere so it's not interfering too much with the buildings you can see a bit of an, uh, an effect of it there but it's very faint so I'll edit that and increase the intensity of that so that it uh, reacts a bit with the, the fog so we can see that's reaching up and fading out uh, I can just see circles inside here which probably means for the final render again I have to increase the quality of the volumetric cloud to get this effect and uh, and I'm going to need a few more of these at different angles so they'll they'll continue to to add in and create a bit of a interest and, and character to this to this underwater city so I'm just going to multiply these by copy and paste in the same one and then changing the angle slightly so I'm just moving them around at the back here just to randomize them a bit so we've got these these searchlight effects going from behind the city probably do with a few more of these perhaps further inside if uh, as long as they don't coincide with the buildings that's the important thing I could uh, I could select a batch perhaps copy and paste them and uh, if I group them I can rotate the whole lot round so that, uh, that the, the more randomized and then it'll just just seem like there's a lot more happening by by adding more of these makes the city look a bit more complicated than it really is so you can see now that it's, it's sort of building up and uh, copy and paste shove some more over on this this side here obviously it's, uh, it's entirely up to you how you want to how many of these you want to add but uh, they, they must be passing through the cloud sphere to create this effect so that's uh, if they, if they don't actually, if they're shining out of the cloud sphere, you won't get any effect of them. Though you can see these two on the outside here, because they're not clipping the edges of the sphere, you won't get any effect. So if I bring them in, you can see the effect. And perhaps some different coloured lights. So if I take this uh, radial light here, and uh, I'll copy and paste that. So this is without having adding in any geometry, and I'll edit that, and I'll change the colour of that to uh, sort of that's probably a bit too white. I want a sort of yellowy greeny colour for this. Let's make more yellow in that. So uh, I can do it this way. Use HLS. And I'll use squared so it's not as dominant as the central light. See, it'll 
just add a bit over on one side to make it look like again there's a bit of variety in this scene so I'll, I'll copy that again add a bit more this, the image gets brighter and brighter as brighter as more light sources added so I'm going to reach a limit at some point when, uh, when I've got enough light sources so and there and once again it, it's probably a bit too much that I might see might lose that or just drop it well down into the building to retain some contrast in the effect so there you go so we've got these these lights but the the slightly too low resolution I can see circles in here the uh, the effect of the trambians in case you're wondering is it's easy to show that I go to the render options and I'll switch it back to regular uh, if you see in regular this these become very harsh because the the scattered light is not picking up the fog effect it renders quickly but uh, the effect is rather too sharp and it doesn't have that murkiness that you have with underwater so re-engage through ambience and uh, you can see immediately the the light is getting scattered into the water and uh, well the fog essentially and then gets scattered back onto the surface of the building so it gives that nice murky feeling so um, well that's going to take five minutes to render and I've not turned the the quality up far enough I'll just moving the camera around a bit get centralize the composition slightly I'm just wondering if I can add any other extra details in the foreground here because I could really do with one of these um, I can use a cube I suppose yeah. gantries that uh, feature heavily so if I put a cube in here it's supposed to be a, a gantry bring it in close to the camera and lower it down and then put a, another couple of cubes on either end if that's going to show up is that lost in the building now it's just the only thing I've, yes it's lost in the building so I'll, I'll make it smaller still lift it to uh, lift it up Gotta work out a world space so where are we here so I can you just um, copy and paste that set that back to square zoom in a bit so just to to give you some idea of putting something in the foreground for for an effect so you've got layers levels of detail it's probably going to be a bit. It all gets a bit confusing in the wireframe at this point, so I'll just shrink those down a little bit. See, I've got something in the foreground now that doesn't look particularly good at the moment. So I'll group that, shrink it down to more to matching the scale of the the city that it's in. See if that then shows up. It's like this could be another way of adding more detail to your scene. So create a few little gantries and uh, just just because they're part of the characteristic of the city I don't know whether they're going to show up or not but you know that's the general idea just to create the illusion of complexity right so I've thrown a few of those in they've not got the material mapped on so they're going to appear quite dark and then the final thing to do is set the resolution of the fog up here so we'll try 75 now which is going to slow things down somewhat. Let's have a look at the render time. Let's see if it's uh, if it's going to be too bad. Oh, about ten minutes. That's not too bad. So uh, let's not see any bounds in that. There's going to be a bit of noise because the trambient's uh, settings really very low at 16 rays per pixel. But that might look okay because we are dealing with the fog effect. So I'll, I'll set it at 36 and just see how bad that's going to make the render time. So if it starts to get very high, then I'll see abandon that and, and have a rethink. Oh, half an hour. That's, that's not too bad. So I'll give that a render now, and we'll we'll see how that looks after half an hour at uh, at this resolution with that raise fix. I just adjusted the camera there. Okay. So I'll pause the render, and we'll see how it looks after half an hour. Here then is the uh, completed render. At this point, when you save the scene, so if you do save as save you would save this as a 8-bit um, BMP file so that's 8 bits per channel however if you have just completed the render and it's not been interrupted then you can actually capture more color information which can be helpful for post-processing so if at this point we go export image and choose either HDR format, oh, not HTML, HDR format, which will give us uh, 96 bits per pixel. In actual fact, we've only got it at 48 bits per pixel from the renderer. 
um, we can save it with more information or you could also save it in uh, TIFF format but 48 bits per pixel so if we save this as a rapture1.tiff with 48 bits per pixel then if it comes to any post processing you'll be able to process the color information better without risking color banding and so, so there's a slight uh, advantage in, in exporting the image rather than just saving so here we go we'll have a look at this image now this is in PaintShop Pro 8 and I'll adjust it to uh, brightness and contrast and I'll adjust the gamma gamma has been a uh, topic of the week for me uh, Dweezil, I don't know how to pronounce uh, her name there uh, it's been enlightening me as to with respect to linear workflow but uh, still covering that so just looking at a sort of a very basic operation here I decided to uh, to reduce the the gamma here to to give it more contrast in the foreground just uh, say it's it's more in keeping with the images that I was looking at as my reference image so that then is going to be the final image okay I hope that's uh, hope that's interesting and helpful